Hey everyone, Mindless Me here, taking a look at Airships, a game by David Stark. You'll find this on Steam under Airships, Conquer the Skies. And we are going to be kind of checking out the game today and seeing if you guys would enjoy playing this or if it's something that you would, you know, look to buy. Uh, it is still in alpha and still in very early development, so, you know, we are not going to be doing a full review on it. However, it doesn't stop us from showing the game off to you guys and, you know, seeing if it's something you would pick up. So, as you can kind of tell by the way things are scrolling across the screen here, is that this game is not one that's going to have top-notch, amazing visuals. It is more of a pixelated style graphics. However, if you actually look at the gameplay and give it a little bit of a chance, this is actually a really solid game. It's not one that you're going to sit and play for 10-12 hours in one sitting, obviously. But it's a great game to just kind of sit down, create your own stuff, and go and blow stuff up. And, you know, how many of us don't enjoy blowing stuff up? Seriously. So, let's go ahead and just jump straight into the editor. And this is where you're going to be spending some of your time if you enjoy creating things. Because this is where you can really kind of use your imagination to create ships and really just kind of deal out death. <laughs> I mean, that's about the best way to put it. So... When you're starting out, you can do a kill, which is essentially going to be giving your ship structural integrity. And whenever we add that, it's going to tell us over here on the left, or when you add really anything, that the ship is too heavy to fly, it needs propulsion, and it has no crew, and we can't give commands to it. So, this is pretty much on the left hand top, is where you're going to be looking at mostly to see how effective your ship is going to be. And obviously, since we can't fly, that's something we need to kind of take care of quickly. And you can do that with a suspendium chamber. And what that does, it adds lift, obviously. And what you also want to pay attention to when you're dealing with lift is the service ceiling. Because the service ceiling is going to determine how high your ship can actually go on the map. And that really gives you an advantage because if your ship can go higher than the other ones, it kind of gives you a little more maneuverability and helps you kind of stay out of the way of things better. Now you can also add a lot of other things. Uh, obviously when you add propellers you need a way for to power them. So coal actually kind of takes care of that because you do require coal in order to move or use your systems like propellers and things like that. So if you run out of coal your ship will be grounded. And of course, when you're dealing with guns, you also need ammo. So if you do not have your ammunition stores, then you're obviously not going to be able to fire your guns. And it's going to make for a very bad time for you. Uh, repair bays are just like what they sound. Uh, they will go around repairing things on your ships and things like that when they're damaged. Fire points are fire extinguishers. Uh, your ship will catch on fire at points when you're getting shot at. So those are necessary. Unless you want your ship to crash and burn, which I don't think anyone does. Crew quarters, all the ships require a certain number of crew in order to actually fly. So those are pretty much going to be required as well. And of course, you got different kinds of weapons down here. Uh, you actually got rams as well, because you can actually ram other ships. Which definitely makes for kind of an interesting way to do combat. And of course you got a multitude of weapons. Uh, the flat cannon was actually recently added. Which it looks like... No, it looks like it actually works. Might have to get him to check that out. Looks like it didn't put into the game correctly. Remember, this game is still an alpha, so there, there are still features added. You know, every time he updates it and things are going to be changing, you know, as he keeps going. So, just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a different design that I'd actually done earlier. And this is one that has an extremely, extremely low service ceiling, but is just ridiculously powerful. And it's got the really huge cannons and things like that. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Actually, let me open up this other one. I'm going to show you. There it is. Another thing you can add to them is a telescope. It actually will help you with your... Uh, firing solutions, I guess is the best way to say it. Now you'll also notice that there is a radial indicator on 
how much, or like the firing range of the weapon, how high, how low it can fire. And as you can see with these, these actually have a really, really nice fire range. And they're really handy to put on the bottom or top of your ships. Uh, especially, like a ship like this that is extremely heavy and stays low, it's actually really good to put them on top. Because you'll find a lot of the smaller ships can actually get over you. And let's see. Um, this one is one that actually is kind of built to be able to move around really quickly and get over top of ships. And the reason is, is it's actually a boarding ship. And as you can see, there's a cargo door here. And then we also have barracks for some of the troops. So basically what they do is they will actually, when you go to board a ship, they will actually move to this little area and they'll actually board another ship and try to take it over. And even though these guys don't really have a lot of weapons and a lot of defenses, where they're really strong at is they can maneuver around to a larger ship and actually take it over and just increase your firepower exponentially. Now the building editor works a lot the same way. The only difference is obviously that it's a building and it's not going to be flying through the air, which would be interesting. So as you can see, this is one that I've built. Uh, it has a huge, huge, ridiculous amount of firepower on either side. And of course, you know, you have the fire extinguishers and things of that nature. And if I wanted to, I could actually put some uh, troops in here and have them try to board other ships, I guess. But I'm not even going to bother with that. So I'm going to just jump into a combat here. And with combat, it's a really good kind of a test bed, I guess to say. And where you can kind of just go and drop your creations and kind of see how effective they are. So we're going to add one of those and go ahead and add a couple of the boarding ships. Now these are already in the game, so we did not create those. And let's see, let's do a HMS Unmatched. They have a decent service ceiling, so it's not too bad. Now you do move with the directional keys, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're kind of in here and your view is a little obstructed. Let's go ahead and add... We'll add my iron fort. I don't see this working out well for me, but we'll see. In fact, if I'm going to do that, I may add some more firepower. I think that's an extremely low service ceiling. You could tell I was definitely looking for firepower, not so much maneuverability. Okay, so I think we might be able to take that out. I'm not entirely sure, considering... Let's go ahead and add another ship to the right, because I want to show you how some of the boarding stuff works. Okay. So, that's... Yeah, this... I'm probably going to be losing this fight, but we'll see. So, when you're actually issuing commands... You can see you can select the ships, and then you have the option to move them, to ram, to ground the ship, to board, target. Then you have other different kind of options. You can basically tell your guys to focus on shooting, moving, and it will speed up those actions or kind of help you. You know, if your ship's on fire everywhere, then obviously you want your guys to get the fire out as soon as possible. And you can do aim fire, normal fire, or rapid fire. And now one thing I would actually like to see is when I have multiple ships like this, I would actually like the option to be able to move multiple ships. I do understand the constraint because all of them do have different order uh, time and things like that. So I, I know it would be a little difficult to do, but any kind of feature to do a, a selecting multiple or anything like that would be great. But it's a really minor thing to be honest. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click these little guys on the board. And then as soon as they can move again, the ship is going to get hammered right there. So. Oh, didn't need to do that. Okay, so let's move down and board him. Hopefully take him.
throw those. Definitely not working. As, as you can see, that thing over there is just a beast. It's slightly ridiculous. Let's go ahead and move this over here. I actually love to be able to take this ship down here. But this guy's actually not really too hot. Let's go ahead and flip him around here. Oh! He's pretty much toast. Let's see if we can board this guy. Looks like they actually boarded my ship. Those guys are out of ammunition. He pretty much crashed and burned. This is not looking good for this battle. Looks like they may have taken over there. I can't tell. Nope. Never mind. We still have control over it. Get him up here and get our guys boarded. It's not looking like they're going to be able to. Go little guys, go. <laughs> As you can see they boarded it, which I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference. But we'll see. Okay, so now we actually have captured this ship. So let's go ahead and move this one over here. Maybe give us some target. Practice, I don't know. Let's see if we can flip this around and so it looks like it may be out of commission. So I don't think it really did us much good by capturing it. Alright, so it looks like I have my ships are pretty much doomed at this point, so we're just going to go ahead and speed this up. So I don't think we're going to be able to take this thing out. As you can see, this guy's out of ammunition, he's out of ammunition. Uh, he's nearing it. And he's officially out, he's officially out. So another way you can actually win battles is by making sure your ships have more than enough ammunition. Because if you can actually just outlast them in terms of ammunition, you'll actually win. So it's kind of another tactic you can use while fighting. And it looks like it is actually still going to carry on. This is kind of insane, to be honest. All those fires. <laughs> so as you can see, there there are a few little hiccups every now and then. I've actually honestly never had the game slow down like this. So this is actually a complete first. I would imagine it has something to do with the thousands of fires down there on that ship. This is actually kind of insane. So I've lost, and as you can see, it was kind of terrible. I wasn't expecting to be able to win against that. That fortress is insane. I designed it with way too much firepower. So after you see that little bit of combat, I'm just going to jump into the editor, or the editor. Uh, I'm going to jump into the actual campaign, sorry. And the campaign, it's kind of a lot of the same as the combat, except it does give you a little bit of... I guess empire management and what it does each of your cities will obviously get an income and they'll have defense maintenances because they'll have the buildings kind of like what I had there and they'll be there for defensive purposes if you get invaded you'll have fleet maintenance because you'll obviously have different ships and things of that nature that you're going to be sending out trying to capture other cities your spy network is going to be where you're trying to go to other cities and look and capture uh, information things like that the secret police is this little 
uh, option menu here you see and what it does it basically makes it harder for them to spy on you and uh, disrupt your shipbuilding and things of that nature so starting out you can kinda go and you can build ships or you can even go into the editor and create your own ships if you really want to it looks like we don't have a lot of cash right now so we're not going to be doing much there now we can go over and send a spy and what that's going to do is when he returns with the information we can see what the income is what kind of shipyard it has looks like it has computers and the secret police is lax so it looks like we can pretty much do whatever we want there and let's see we got a little bit of money so let's go ahead and build a tragedy and as soon as that get done, gets done building we're going to send us a ship over here and you can invade which I'm assuming this is probably not going to end very well but we're going to invade anyways okay so as you can see it plays out just like the others uh, like the combat that I showed you you have your side which you can place your ships and then their side except we got two ships and three buildings so we're definitely not going to be able to win this but it doesn't stop me from trying let's see if we can't board here well it looks like he's going to fly up above us and he's going to drop bombs on us, that's awesome I wish my guys would have tried to board here but Yep, looks like we're on fire. Yeah, I don't think this battle's gonna end very well. We're gonna go ahead and speed it up here. Yeah, it looks like I got defeated. So if you don't lose your ship, which I actually lost that one, it'll actually give you the opportunity to take it back to your home area, and then you can also repair it and kind of go back out and attack. But at this time you know that's really all it has to offer uh, he is looking to kind of flesh out the campaign a little better so that'll definitely be nice to see and kind of see what he does with it because even if there was a little more depth to it or kind of a reason behind the war uh, it would be a little better it, it doesn't take much I mean you know this isn't one of those games that you expect to have like a big epic storyline and and things of that nature so you know any additional uh, kind of features or things like that that's added to the campaign will help a lot uh, but I mean in its current state I mean it's a really solid game if you just want something to kind of you know start up and play around with and kind of create your own machines and warships and things like that and actually go out and destroy stuff now he is also looking to add in some more content like uh, ground ships or land ships which should definitely be very interesting to see and could definitely change up the gameplay a little bit. Now, one thing I really do love to see is that it already does have online multiplayer and also land games. I mean, you know, because this would be one of those really fun games where you could throw a few people in together and potentially have some uh, epic battles and, you know, create your own crazy contraptions and kind of throw them at each other and see what happens. So, I mean, you know, in regards to this being the price it is and how much it has to offer yeah I mean this is a solid game you know it may not be everyone's cup of tea everyone may not enjoy you know this type of gameplay and the kind of features this game has to offer but for those of you out there who just want to build stuff and blow crap up it should be perfect so I mean you know we'll keep tabs on it and we'll keep you guys updated on you know some of the features and stuff that he's going to continue adding to it but I would definitely implore you guys to go check it out and see what you think and I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any comments or any questions or anything, you know, feel free to let us know. You know, we'll be more than happy to answer anything you guys have and uh, show you guys more. But thank you guys again for watching, and we'll, we'll catch you later.